I'm looking out the window because I think I should be able... No, there it is. I see it. That's super cool. I don't see my little biplane out the window, but the airliner is right there. Hi, my name is Akaki and this is my homemade 3D printed joystick. I made it with my 3D printer, a little Arduino board and some magnets of all things, if you can believe me. If you'd like, I can show you how I made it. So, first of all, it's pretty cool. It's got uh, all the things, ooh, all the things you need. It's got buttons. It's got a trigger for your missiles, uh, four buttons on here. It's got a additional throttle or perhaps a trim tab here that you can move around. What I like about it is it's got two individual springs for the pitch and the roll, which means that when you're in a turn, like I'm right now, and you're pushing back on this elevator spring, you can still feel where the middle ground or the middle detent is on the roll axis because they're, the two things are independent. And that's exactly how it's in a real flight stick too, I believe, because it's got two independent controls. It's up and down and left and right. I made it quite light because that's how I like these things but you can adjust the springs or the rubber bands however you like. So I'm hanging out here uh, at this sky tree. I think it's basically the only unique building in this city. I'm flying this biplane, which is great because uh, it's my favorite plane. I used to have an RC model of this, for, as you can see from this old video where I put a cat on one. Let's fly to Shinjuku and I'll show you how I made my 3D printed joystick. Later on I'll even explain to you how the magnets work in this joystick. Here's all the parts you need to print. Most of them should be super easy to print. First part we're gonna make is this hinge. Here you can see the completed form. To do that you take your magnets and glue them in. You need four of them two here and two in this hole here. So the whole effect sensor is going to go between them and rotate to give you the reading. On the shaft there's this pedestal piece where you can glue the magnet sensing sensor like this. Screw that shaft in and now you can see how it rotates between these magnets. Add some grease for the cam slider and then you add the rubber bands or, or springs See how it cams down on that. The second whole effect sensor goes on the pedestal on this base piece there. And uh, I'm out of order here, but you need to solder the wires to these Just power, ground and the signal for both. Uh, I'm adding some strain relief here with hot snot glue. It goes down like this and you screw it in. And the second spring is back here. It affects on the second cam a bit differently. For the trim tab, you just screw in one of these potentiometers and this tab and the switches or buttons go the same way. You can add as many as you want. For the joystick head, I'm using these very small micro switches. So solder the normally open and the ground or the common and glue them in wherever. It's quite spacious here. For the trigger, I'm using this slightly larger one that's slightly more stiff. For this, you need to make sure that the position is just right. So check it for yourself. And the face buttons here are glued in this orientation. It's a bit more cramped down here, so you need to be careful. I actually took out the arms from the switches, so they have less trouble. It's a really cool feel, I think. This assembly then glues in like this. It's messy inside. I'm trying to help that with some shrink wrap here. So just try and get everything in order and hide it away under the rug with this second piece that just screws down and everything's hidden there and looks great from the outside. 
this is how it works. And now, now for those wires, you need to solder them to your microcontroller. And that microcontroller then glues down here. And hide all of that mess again with this cover. So I made this joystick for your pitch and roll. But I also made this throttle unit so you can control your engines. It's got multiple things so you can uh, assign multiple engines on it. It's not modeled after any one plane. Some switches around here so you can use your gears and whatever. At the heart of this thing is one of these. It's a Arduino Pro Micro. It's just a certain type of Arduino microcontroller development board that has a specific type of the Atmel chip in it which allows you to very easily make it into a human interface device, so a joystick or a game pad. So I put one of those in there, hooked up that to all the buttons and the two axes and then these uh, analog knobs. With a very simple script, you can get all of those data to come out as joystick data to your computer. So any game will be able to use this as the control inputs. I uh, also made some pedals for your rudder. These are a bit too flimsy, so I wouldn't recommend it. I think I'm going to end up using my racing pedals. So the joystick works on magnets and hall effect sensors. But what are hall effect sensors? So I have a bag of them here. What these are, are it's a really cool sensor which can sense magnetic fields. So these sensors, they sense how strong the magnetic field is at their surface. So if you get a magnet and attach it to a moving bit, perhaps you can sense that motion. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, only trouble is that the magnetic field is not a very linear sort of shape. It's got a, the, it's got a very exponential sort of shape to it. So if you move or rather rotate a magnet through that by way of deflecting the joystick, you won't get a very linear representation of that motion. So uh, what I've done is taken two magnets and if you align them right like this, uh, south here and north here, in the middle you'll get this corridor of linear constant magnetic fields, almost like a hallway of magnetism. And that's why it's called a Hall effect sensor. Well, a constant magnetic field might not sound very useful to you because if you're just moving your sensor back and forth, but what you can do is keep the location the same and just rotate the angle because these whole effect sensors, they, get, they report zero if the magnetic field is perpendicular, parallel, to the surface of the sensor. So it's only counting the direction of the magnetic field in one direction and by gradually rotating that angle of sensor or the magnetic field around it, you'll get a higher and higher voltage out of that sensor. I'll actually show you the original design. So here's the earlier version. What's different here is I tried to mount the magnet here below the axis and then have a two axis whole effect sensor here that could sense X and Y. But the signal ended up being very non-linear and it was very difficult to compensate for that. The pink piece is solid and this goes up and down. And you've got two separate cams, one here and w one shorter one down here. Worked okay, okay, but I think this is more elegant this time. So why don't you try it? It's super cheap. The Arduino is like $5. The sensors are less than a dollar a piece. You can get some bearings, uh, but everything can be put together with just M3 hardware as well. Uh, get some springs or use rubber bands. So that's my little joystick. Uh, I hope it saves you some money and I hope you have some fun making one of these. I'm not very impressed with this game so I was very glad that I didn't get a expensive joystick just to play this game. I'll probably go back to playing Kerbal Space Program anyway. Uh, I hope this also gives you a chance to try out 
flying simulators without breaking the bank. Anyway, I'll see you next time.